My name is David Oliver. I'm a geriatrician based in the UK. I'm the current president of the British Geriatric Society and I'm a former national clinical director in the English Department of Health. So I'm used to advising ministers and governments about health care for older people. And I'm over here as a guest of the Royal College of Physicians of Ireland for the Transforming Care for Older People Conference, which is the inaugural conference on improving care for older people, focusing on some of the government initiatives to improve quality of care, care coordination and integrated care. Well, I think these are universal challenges in all Western nations. So across the whole of Western Europe and the OECD, every system is facing the same issue of a rapid rise in the oldest old, a rise in the number of people living with multiple long-term conditions, with dementia, with frailty, and often using multiple services. And so the challenges are, how do you help keep, keep people well for longer by prevention and healthy lifestyles? Second thing is when they are living with long-term medical problems, how you enable them to stay in their own home, stay well and keep away from hospital and avoid complications. But then when they do need services like the acute hospital, how you make sure that hospitals are actually geared up yeah. around their needs and that when they leave, they have proper access to other services. And amongst all of that is getting all the different services and systems to talk to each other because often people fall down at the cracks between the systems. Well, it's not just what I think, there's a good evidence base behind it. And we know that if you have comprehensive geriatric assessment that's led by specialist geriatricians and multidisciplinary teams, you're far more likely to be alive and in your own home up to a year later. So it, we know it delivers, and we know in any model where they put in those expert generalists, if you like, people like geriatricians at the front door of the hospital, and most older people see them, it delivers outcomes. But when we talk about the future of acute medicine and the future of general medicine, most acute medicine and general medicine now is in effect the care of older people with complex needs. So I think we've got an issue where the whole medical workforce has to upskill and actually have the training to deal with people who have four or five different problems with them at once and not just single organ disease. Well, I think if you look at what happens in the animation and it's real life, it happens to a lot of older people, mm. it's that the system isn't geared up to people who have multiple problems at the moment. It's all in reactive mode and not proper yeah. care coordination. So if we're serious about changing things, we need to base services around people's needs and them as an individual and not around the, what's good for the providers really. So in the Mrs Andrews animation, you can actually think about what could have happened differently to avoid many of the problems. And some of it's not about money, some of it's not about more staff, it's about people working differently. There's a couple of things about integration. One is it's person-centred, coordinated care. So someone like her needs properly joined up, coordinated care and not haphazard, episodic care. But the second thing is we really do need to have the right resource and the right staff in the right part of the system. And it's all very well talking about care closer to home. But if we don't have the capacity in those community services and those social care services, people like her will get marooned in hospital. So some of the integration piece is, have we actually got the right resource in the right part of the system to meet people's needs at the moment? And that might be quite challenging because it might mean taking some money and capacity away from hospitals, which isn't always politically popular. But if we don't do something quite radical, hospitals will fall over under the pressure. Yeah. There's a tendency amongst health and social care professionals the world over to assert that they're great or their profession's great mm. and everybody else is terrible and yeah. to try and shift the blame. Mm. And my point was, for instance, if you're in an acute hospital, it's fine to say there isn't enough capacity in social care, that the primary care isn't doing its job. But often there's a big avoidable delays within hospitals. They allow people to get moved three or four times for no good reason. They introduce delays to investigation, delays to decision making. People aren't reviewed often enough by senior decision makers. They don't have enough access to physiotherapy and we make them immobile. So I think there's something about put your own house in order and do everything you can that's within your gift before you start saying it's all everybody else's fault.